Number five, this fulfilling of the law in loving others through the Spirit by faith. And here is the key to number five. It is not a perfect love in this life. You will never be able to love as perfectly as your Spirit desires for you to love. Romans chapter 7, verse 15. Notice, if you will. Romans 7, 15. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. And boy, does that burn me up. I mean, it's not to make a preacher cuss. Why do I do that? We have to learn there's limitations because we don't live in a perfect world. Romans chapter 7, verse 19. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Look at verse 23 and 24 of that chapter. But I see another member warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. And Paul went on to say, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And when we come to that point in our lives, we should be able to say, as the Apostle Paul says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Philippians 3.12 says this, Not as though I had already obtained. Paul says, I haven't got there yet. I'm not perfect yet. I have not fulfilled totally all that God wants me to do. Neither were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which I also am apprehended of Christ Jesus. I have a willing mind, I have a faithful spirit that enables me to listen carefully to what God's Word is saying to me through preaching or through others that enables me to continue to serve Him as much as I possibly can. Number six. But my fulfilling the law in loving others through the Spirit by faith will become perfect when I die or when Christ comes and I will live in perfection of love forever. Now listen, this, this is but a small part of life. Folks, at the most, we're not going to live very long. And you've got to understand, God has proposed to us a life of eternity. There's more to life than this. I have all eternity to serve God. And I will be able to serve God perfectly without any destruction, without any sinful nature. I will be able to clearly glorify God in whatever He chooses me to do when I get to heaven forever and forever and Amen. forever. Mm -hmm. Moreover, whom He did predestinate, Romans 8.30, them He also called, and whom He called, them He also justified, and whom He justified, them He will glorify. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Philippians 1.6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He will keep on working on you. Amen. And sometimes he has me to work on you. <laughs> and I'm not doing my job if I'm not working on you. Some of you. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, <laughs> verses 22 and 23. Hebrews chapter 12. 
You are finding these scriptures as fast as I'm finding them, right? <laughs> Hebrews 12, 22 says, But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an immutable company of angels, to the general assembly, and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirit of just men made perfect. We are going to be made perfect. Really? I'm perfect positionally in Christ, but my body is not perfect. My flesh is not perfect. My mind is not perfect. But there is coming a day that God is going to make me perfect in every aspect of my life. Amen. I'll be standing in, on, on the shores or whatever it is of Mount Zion in the heavenly Jerusalem with an immutable company of angels, and I will be perfect. Number seven. And even though I will one day be perfect in love, the completeness of that evidence, that existence, will never be a perfect one because I will always live as part of my fallenness. I will always be a forgiven sinner. And I'll always be in need of imputed alien righteousness and sin-bearing substitute for my right standing before God. God's Son has to stand before the throne, constantly talking to God. God, He is one of my child. I died for Him. I died for His sins. Now, God, I know He did that. I know His attitude wasn't good. I know His loving wasn't perfect. I know that He did it for His own glory. I understand that, but I'm going to impute into His account a little bit more righteousness. Because He is a forgiven sinner. This reason I don't get very discouraged at times. I know I'm a sinner, but I also know that God, by His grace through Jesus Christ, continuously to feed me with His righteousness. I will forever lean on His righteousness and His sacrifice. I must constantly lean on Him. I must take a hold of Him. I must implant in Him and meet Him. Otherwise, I could never make it. Number eight, even though imperfect, this spirit dependency, this Christ-exalting love, which is essentially self-sacrificing gladness in the temporal and the eternal good of others, is the true and real direction of life the law requires. In this life, we have a new direction. Not full perfection. The direction is what the law demands on the way to perfection. I'm walking daily, one step at a time, and I'm hoping that I'm a little better today than I was yesterday. I hope that I sin less in 2012 than I did in 2011. I know that I wasn't exactly what I should be in 2011, but I, my desire is I'll be a little step higher in 2012. Amen. When the fulfilling of the law is called the law of liberty, it means that as Christians we pursue love and liberty from law keeping as grounds of our justification are the power of our sanctification. Instead, we pursue it by the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. We look to the Spirit of Christ for transformation so that love flows by power from within. Don't you just hate to try to love people? Don't you just try to hate doing things for people and you hate doing it when you're doing it? 
on NPR yesterday, this mother had a a son that was was in his 20s or 30s, totally dependent on her. She began to worry about him that she, when he she dies. So she's trying to get him on his own. She bought, she got him an apartment where he could live on his own. He decorated his apartment like a five-year-old and enjoyed it. He didn't like to be told anything. And he's always lived with his mother. So she thought if she could go throughout the town, she could find someone to volunteer to be his partner and come in and visit with him. Because he needed companion and to, not, you know, and to take him place, etc., etc. She was so naive. She thought she could put up posters. I need a nice volunteer who will go once a week to visit my son and help him out. When that didn't work, she went to the police station. Couldn't find anybody at the police station. She went to the mayor's office. Mayor, it's your job to take care of people. Do you? Nobody would do it. She went to the south. She went, she went every place for about a couple months, and she come to find and realize nobody wants to take the time to go over and visit an artistic boy on a daily basis. We look to the Spirit of Christ for transformation so that love flows by the power within, not pressure from without. That's the reason I don't like to pressure people. I want it to come from within, not from without. James 1.25 says this, But... Whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. Amen. Galatians 5 1 says this Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Don't go back doing the same thing you were doing before. When the, when the fulfilling of the law is called the, the law of Christ, it means that we pursue a love that is guided and enabled by a life, the Word, and the Spirit of Jesus Christ. We are so to live and be guided and enabled by the life and the work of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. That's the standard of love in this life. 1 Corinthians 9.21 says, 1 